show you how to make this necklace using the Nature's Bounty treasure bag, which is treasure bag number two. And with this, we'll use several components from that box. However, if you do not have that box, this video will still show you techniques on how to do some connecting, some wire looping, crimping, and maybe just serve as inspiration to make your own pieces with your own stuff. Perhaps you have some similar components or you can gather some sim similar components and would like to make this type of necklace. So it's not just for the treasure box people. So anyway, let's go ahead and look and see what we have today. Let me zoom in really close on the front so you can see the cluster here of um, dangles has turned out really pretty and it hangs really pretty on the neck. So this is what this looks like and let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make it. Okay, for this project I'm going to design a necklace with a bunch of the stuff that's in the treasure box. So I'm going to use the tube component that came in the treasure box and I'm going to use a few of the leaf beads I believe I'm designing, so I'm not positive, but I've got out two of the long leaves, one scooped leaf and one monstera leaf. And then I'm going to be using some ball head pins. You can use any head pins you have on hand. Just something that you can put your beads on so that we can make some dangles on chain. Speaking of chain, get out whatever's left of your chain, and we'll be using segments of that. And then the... Um, jump rings that came in the box, we'll be using some of those and one larger one. So I didn't put larger ones in, but you might want to get one larger one, 8 to 10 millimeter round. You can probably get away with a 6 millimeter. You'll see what I mean. You need something to put a bunch of your chain on here for the dangles we're going to make. And so you want a little bit larger. 8 would be just about right. 10 is a little big, but I think I can get away with it. And then one of the lobster claw clasps that came in the box, and I may add another jump ring that's a little bit bigger than the ones that were in the box, but not quite this big, for the end for my lobster claw clasp. And then <clears throat> you will need your filigree beads. So in your box, you have five 8 millimeter filigree beads, beads and two 10 millimeter, and we'll be using some of those. And then... Um, we're going to use the 4x3 rondelle crystals that are in the box. You have a strand of platinum color and you have a strand of sky blue color. We'll be using those and we will be using 6 millimeter round opalite, the light tingy, light tinged blue color opalite that's in the box. Um, you'll need some size 2 crimp beads if you're going to use a medium size wire and I am using medium soft flex. I've cut about 22 inches. I'm going to make about an 18, 19, somewhere around that length in, inch necklace. Jeez, can't talk. So you want to always cut a few extra inches so that you can manipulate the wire through your crimp tubes well. So I'm using a beetle on size two and I'm using medium soft flex. And of course, you're going to need some long nose, flat nose pliers, some wire cutters, and some round nose pliers. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, part. so I'm designing, so I may change things up as I do this, but I know that I want to take my two bead and center it on my beading wire. And because it's filigree, it's going to take a second because it wants to get caught on everything. So just put it through your beading wire just like that. And then we're going to put on either side of this, um, I wonder if I put a, this is just an experiment, and see if I can put, that might be kind of pretty if I put a bead cap on either side, but I don't think I'm going to because it's going to move around weird. So what I want to do is I want to start with, I think I'm going to put like six of my platinum color rondelles on either side and see if I like that. And I think I'll just make segments in between with some of the opalite and the blue crystals. So I'm going to start with, well that's four, Gina, you said six. 
So let's start with six on either side here. And then I'll just pick up the other side of the wire and pick up my six on this side. And oh, come here, you little bead. And then I think I want, yeah, because see, that's going to fit right down into that tube just right. So let me get you a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about here. So those fit down really nice, and it gives a little sparkle. So I like that. This is going to be kind of a skinny necklace design. And then I'm going to pick up let's see if you still have some of your bead caps you could use a bead cap on either side of your segments here but I think I'm going to pick up a opalite and then a blue crystal and then I'm going to pick up a platinum crystal and then a blue crystal and an opalite And then I think I'll do that again on the other side. And you can do this any way you want. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing. You can add stuff that you have at home. <clears throat> Whatever you want. Actually, I have changed my mind. Because we have those filigree beads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop... an opalite, a blue crystal, and then I think towards the front here, I'm going to use the two bigger filigree beads. So I'm going to grab, and I could even do less of the platinum to make this a little closer. Now with these filigree beads, it's going to take you a second to get your wire through because there's always ledges and weird things inside them. And then just pop that down there. Let's see if I like that. Yeah, I think I like that. Then I will pick up another of my blue crystal and then my opalite bead. Yeah, that's a little better. And then <clears throat> I think I'll just do one side real quick and see if I like it. Then I'll do the other side. So now I have this. I'm going to pick up about six more of my... Um, Platinum color beads. There's four. Oh, come here. Five. Six. And then I think I'll repeat that. But this time I'm going to use the smaller beads. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick up my opalite, my um, blue crystal, and then the, I think they were 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter, so this should probably be an 8 millimeter. Either that or they were 8 and 12, but, or, but I think, I think this is an 8 millimeter, pretty sure. So I'm going to drop it down, just like that. And I'm just going to continue making the pattern on this side of the necklace, and once I get my pattern together, I'll show it to you. You can go ahead and do both sides if you'd like. But, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and show you the exact pattern I have made. And we will crimp the ends, and then we will make a really pretty dangle from the component in the middle. So I'll be back. Okay, so this is what I've got. I have made sections of six of the platinum color 4x3 Rondell crystals, and then opalite, little crystal, the 3x4 blue, and then the 10 millimeter. Um, filigree bead and then again I've repeated that with the light blue opalite six millimeter round and then six of the four by three and then opalite crystal and then I started putting in my um, eight millimeter so I have repeated sections first with ten millimeters and then with eight millimeter and I'll just zoom in so you can look at it and let me get one side just so you can see the pattern. Just like this. And then on the end, after I've done my last section with my 8mm, I went ahead and put in my opalite, my 
three by four blue, and then my six three by four of my platinum color. And then instead of putting the filigree in the middle, I just put an opalite. So I put the blue four by three, the opalite, and then the four by three. And I did one more section of six, and then one more section of the three four by threes and the opalite, and then just one crystal. So let me just zoom it in so you can pause it and look at it if you want to do it exactly the same way. Let's see if I can zoom it in without making too much of a mess here. That's what that looks like. So you can just look at that. It's very simple. And of course it doesn't have to be like this either. Just make it to the length you want it. Put the beads on however you want. This is going to be a little over an 18 inch. It measures out right now without my clasping at like 18 and a half. So what we're going to do now is I've clipped off one end. You can put a piece of tape on the end, whatever you'd like. Make sure your necklace is centered and you have the same amount on either side. It'll slide around on the wire right now. So slide it until you have it nice and centered. So you have a couple inches on either side to work with and then pick up a crimp tube. And if you want to, you can put some crimp covers on this. You can use a wire guardian, whatever it is you like to do. I feel like with soft flex, I don't really need a wire guardian, so I don't use them often, but you can if you want to. Now I have put my crimp tube down. I'm going to drop on my clasp, and then I'm going to go back through my crimp tube, trying to just slide on top of the wire that I already have through so it stays parallel. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and slide through that first rondelle too if I can. <clears throat> just like that. Now you don't have to, but I find that it's easier to do so and it's less pokey. But, you know, it's up to you. You can cut it off and do it however you'd like. So, I'm going to do it like this. Then you're going to adjust, let me get you closer, so I just slid through. And then you're going to adjust your loop by pulling on the long strand here until it's the right size for you to have some movement, but it's not huge. Make sure that your wires inside the crimp tube, I just kind of turn it and look at it, are pretty parallel. You can hold them that way, like that. They're nice and parallel. So they're laying next to each other. They're not twisted inside the crimp tube. And then I am going to grab my crimping tool. And in the second divot, the one closest to the handle, you can see when I close it, it's kind of heart shaped or it's kind of got a googly <laughs> thing here. You're going to use that divot. So hold it. Place your crimp plier onto the crimp tube centered in that second divot and squeeze. And now you can see I have the, a nice fold in the center between my wires. And then I'm just going to turn it sideways. So that means the two little tubes I formed are going to be on either side of the crimping tool, touching the crimping tool, just like so, and then squeeze. That pushes that the two sides into that fold, pushes them together, and then you have a nice crimp, just like that. And then I'm just going to cut this as close as I can to that bead. Tuck it into the bead. If there's any tail, tuck it into the bead next to the one, just like that. And I have a really nice crimp, and it looks good. Now on this side, we're going to do the same thing. You can, We can do this off camera. I'm just going to get it prepared. So I'm going to drop down my crimp tube. I'm going to grab, I'm using about a six or seven millimeter round jump ring. It's a heavier gauge, like an 18 gauge, so that it won't pull open easily, and I've closed it tightly to make sure that my wire won't slip through. And then I'm just going to go into it, just like I did on the other side with the clasping. Pull my wire through, or push my wire through the first bead if I can. If you can't, you can't. It's, you know, no big deal. There's a debate about whether you should just cut it off at the end or whether you should go through a bead. And it's, truly, that's just, doesn't really matter. 
either way it's all personal preference so I'm not able to slide through that bead so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the crimp tube oh come on crimp tube just like that and slide it through and bring this forward so you can see I'll hold on to my um, wire on the side that does not slide so I can then use my wire on the longer part and pull just like that until I get my tube the size I want and as I'm pulling on it I'll make sure that my crimp tube and all of my tension on this side stays nice and together just like that and then I can move my wire over so it's parallel and I got to make that loop just a little smaller it's a little too big I'll just pull until I have it the size I want maybe a little bit smaller okay so that's where it wants to be just about right there and that's good I'm going to make sure my wires are parallel so I just turn it over I just move my wires until they're next to each other and then again in the second divot closest to the handle I'm going to center my um, crimping tool over that crimp bead and squeeze and as you can see I have encased both of those wires into little tubes now I can place those little tubes on either side of my crimping tool in the first divot well that just that jump ring just wants to be in there and we go just like that and squeeze and there you have it. Now I can cut this off very close. And sometimes I like to slide it through the bead because sometimes it can be a little pokey. And if it is, if you find that your wire is a little pokey, put a crimp cover over it that should cover the little pokey part too. But it looks like I got it cut pretty flush and it's just fine. So I could put a couple more jump rings on here and a little dangly if I want to too and that would make an extender or I can just leave it like that that's however now we are going to now you can see I have the main part of my necklace let me show you what it looks like and now I am going to begin making a focal on the tube component here so We'll be right back and get that started. Okay, so now we're going to make some dangles to hang off of here. Now you can decide that you just don't want to do any of this and you can put a jump ring and you can put your little single rose on here too and that would look really pretty too. But <clears throat> I've decided I want to make some dangles. I have one of these filigree beads left of the 8 millimeter size and I'm going to use it. I have cut some chain and my first one is 12 links long and then I'm going to cut them kind of random after that. You can make as many or few as you'd like. Just make sure each one is a little bit different length than the previous one. So this one I have, let's see, I have 12 links on one and 10 links on the other. So I'm going to start with my longest one, which is the 12 link, and I'm going to make a wrap and slide the loop through and then wrap the wire around. So I have my longest angle with my filigree bead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this head pin into the filigree bead and make sure that it doesn't slide all the way through and it does. So the head is too small on this one. And let's see, I think because of that I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my rondelles, just like this, and I'm going to put it on, and then I'm going to drop this down. So that will be my um, longest link here. So then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to put it right on top of that bead, just like this, and I'm going to bend 
the wire over the top of the back part of the plier here and then I'm going to turn my wrist into that bend that I created. I'll get you a little closer just like this and then I'm going to bring the wire over the top of the plier. Now I'm not making a great big loop. I don't want a huge loop so I'm staying more towards the front of my plier. And then as I bring my wire around I'll turn my wrist a little and I'll just bring that wire under the plier just like that and then I'm just going to grab a hold of this and open it a little bit. I'm going to take my chain and I'm going to drop one link onto the loop I just created. Then I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and I'm going to grab onto that loop that I created. I'm going to switch hands just because it's easier for me to do this with my right hand. I'm going to grab a hold of that loop again. Gee, that was graceful. And then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to start wrapping that. And I'm not going to worry about it being really nice and neat. I'm just going to kind of do a messy wrap. Get that back in there. Make sure I'm in camera here. And I'm just going to wrap this around until I'm happy with it. And like I said, it's just kind of a messy wrap. I'm not worried about it being nice and neat and perfect. I just want it wrapped on there. Straighten out my loop. And then I will cut off this wire. And just kind of tuck in my tail. And this is what I have like that. And then I'm going to do several of those. You can do as many or as few as you would like with different lengths of chain here. So it doesn't have to be. Now if you want yours to lay out to where everything is nice and neat on either side. So say you want to make two of yours with two little light blue chains like this. And you make two the exact same size and then and let's say you want to put an opalite on one then you'll make it a couple links shorter and make either side exactly the same and then when you slide on to your jump ring you can put another jump ring on and it'll lay out flat and I'll show you a little bit more in detail what I'm talking about I'm not going to do that my jump ring is going to hang like this vertically onto my component because I'm not going to use another jump ring to make sure it lays flat. So I'm going to have mine all random sizes. Just make sure that each one that you make is a little shorter than the previous one. You can go two links shorter or you can go three links, five links, whatever you want. Just make sure each one is a little bit different length than the last one you made. Now I'm going to make one <clears throat> on this length of chain that I cut with one of these tiny rondelles. So I'm going to do the exact same thing except for on a smaller scale here. So I'm just going to place the bead onto the head pin, place my plier right on top of that bead, roll the wire over the top of the back part of my pliers, and then turn my pliers vertical like this and bring the wire over the top. Then as I come around I'm just going to turn my wrist a little and bring that wire underneath the plier just like this and then I'm just going to pull it out a little bit. So this is what you should have an open loop like this and then I'm going to grab my next length of chain and I'm going to drop this on here Now you can open the chain and put it on here, but because these are twisted links, so you could just make your wrap and then open the chain and drop it on. However, these twisted links are a little bit harder to close. They distort easier, so I'm just doing it this way so that I don't distort the links on my chain. Now I'm holding on to my loop, and I'm just going to take my fingers and do it because these are soft enough, but I don't like how sloppy that is. So I'm going to grab my round nose and I'm just going to start turning. And like I said, I'm not doing real neat wraps, just 
turning it on there and then I'm going to cut that. Oops, I'm fling it across the room. And then I am going to tuck in my little tail like that. Let's get that a little better. Okay, now I have another dangle with a little rondelle on it. Now I'm going to do several. I'm going to put, I, I don't know how many, I'll show you, but I'm going to do one with an opalite and then I'll do one with this and maybe another one with a blue one, whatever I decide to do. And like I said, I'm just going to do it at random lengths of chain. So go ahead and make a few of those. I'll be right back to show you what I've made. Okay, so this is what I've made. I've just kind of randomly made different lengths of chain, making sure each length was a little different than the previous lengths that I had made. So here's my longest one. Now, mine are not going to lay graduated. If you want them to be graduated, say you want your center one to be the longest and then say you're going to make two of your opalite on either side. You'll cut the two opalite a little bit shorter than the first one and you'll make them exactly the same size so that you can drop them on either side of the longer one. And then say you want to make your blue ones and then two of your um, platinum color ones. You can do that. It's just that you're going to have to cut double size chains for each size that you cut so that they will lay out graduated for you. And then when you put them on your jump ring, you will lay, you will put them on in order. So you'll put your longest one on first, then you'll put your next length on one side of it, and then your next length on the other side of it, and make sure that they graduate as you put them on the chain with the longest one in the center. If you do not want to do that, you want to do it like I'm doing it, then you don't have to worry about any of that. And when, if you're going to do graduated, then you will have to put another jump ring on this jump ring and put it on to your component so that it lays out flat and then you'll get a nice flat graduated look. Otherwise, just go ahead and grab your bigger jump ring and open it up. I'm going to put these on randomly, so I'm going to start with my center and then I'm going to put one of them on, let's see, I'll put the longest one on this side. And then I'll grab my next one and put it on this side. And it doesn't really matter how you put them on. Just put them on either side of your longest component so that not everything is lopsided. Let's see, I think I have one more little short one. Let me see. Maybe I'll put that on there too. Just for the, well, no, I think this is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this blue one over to this side because I don't want two blue right next to each other. So there, that'll be more random. And then I'll put this one over here. And I think actually I'll put this longer one here. So it doesn't matter how you put them on. I'm just doing it how I think it's going to look best for me. And you can do it how you think it's going to look best for you. That's fine. Let's see if I even want this one. Yeah, I do. Okay, so now I've dropped these on here. This is what it looks like. It's just a random bunch of stuff dropped on here. And then I'm going to Go ahead and close this. Well, actually, I'm not going to close it. I'm going to put it onto my component. And then I'm going to close it. Now, this is what I was talking about. Oops, that's not closed. is that this is laying, as you can see, it's laying vertical, up and down. It's not laying flat. So if I put another jump ring on here, my jump ring would lay flat. But I don't want it to, and I'm going to disguise that it's laying this way by putting some little leaves around the front. And that's going to actually make it look um, 
kind of camouflaged and a little bit fuller. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these long leaves and I'm going to put it onto the loop of the component, not onto my jump ring. I'm just going to put it on one side of my jump ring here onto the component loop and close it. These already open jump rings, sometimes they don't close quite great. I thought they would be really convenient for us to have open jump rings, but I kind of don't like them. So, you know, live and learn. Let me find that jump ring and close it better. Okay. So I, all I did was close that if I was out of camera, sorry about that. But now I'm going to grab another of my long leaves and I am going to put it on the other side of the jump ring here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this jump ring and I'm just going to put it on that long leaf. Then I'm going to grab my Monstera leaf, which I seem to have misplaced. So, where are you? Where are you? Mm. Let me grab another okay, one. Okay, so I've got my Monstera leaf now. I'm just going to go ahead and um, close the jump ring on this long leaf. So, I'm going to take the long leaf, put a jump ring on it, and close it. And then I am going to take this Monstera leaf, grab a jump ring, drop the leaf on. Then I'm going to jump the, drop the jump ring on this long leaf on the Monstera leaf jump ring. Let me open this a little more or hold it differently or something. And drop this one on. And then I'm going to put it on the other side of my component here. So on the opposite side that I put the other long leaf on. See if I can actually figure this out here. There we go. So I'm just going to put this on here and close it. Straighten this all out. And then I'm going to take the scoop leaf and I'm going to grab a jump ring for it. <clears throat> and I may change this jump ring. This big jump ring would be better if it was like, I don't know, eight millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, something like that. This is a little bit too big, but it'll probably work. But um, if you have one that's a little smaller than what I have, I think that's like a 10 millimeter. All right, so I have put the scoop leaf on the jump ring, and then I'm going to put it on the front of the big jump ring that I have all my other stuff on. Let me open this a little bit. So it sticks out here. I'm going to put it on right on the front. And this should make more of a cluster look than a nice laid out graduated look. So let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, that works really well. You can't really tell unless I can hold it up and see if I can hold it up for the camera here. But see it, back off a little. And I will put it on, see how that lays? get even a little closer. It will lay to where all of this will dangle and then there will be a cluster of leaves on the top. And I will, like I said, I will put it on a neck model or something, but you can kind of get the gist here how it lays because of the way that I put the jump ring on vertical instead of sideways and because of the way that I connected the leaves on the existing jump ring that's vertical and on the component. 
then it makes more of a cluster look, more of a random cluster look that kind of hangs together. And then you have a nice little cluster of leaves at the top. And it really, really looks pretty in person. It's very difficult for me to show you, but it works really nicely. And let me straighten everything up and I'll show you the necklace. And this is what it looks like. I went ahead and put a little, um, another jump ring with a little chain and a dangle on the end just to make it a little cuter. So that looks really cute, I think. And I put it on, it really hangs pretty. It hangs really nice, looks really good. And I think that that turned out really pretty.